Okie dokie. Hello guys. Um, today we're going to be learning how to do docky simulations with Autodocina as well as how to analyze the results. So before we get started, there's two softwares that you're going to need. Um, the first of which is OpenBabel. Um, so you're going to go to openbabel.org and you're going to click download. And then you're going to go to click the latest installer. And you're going to click open babel 3.1.1 xe. It'll download pretty quickly. I'm just going to click on the installer. Actually, looks like you have to try the other one. It doesn't matter which one you choose, but this time it did. So you're going to download it and you're going to click yes. And you're just going to kind of spam next. And then it should just quickly install for you. And the purpose of this software is it's a software that um, uh, it allows the translation of um, one chemical form file format to another. And that's something that will become useful later on uh, when we do our document analysis. And uh, now it's done. Uh, so we have that. And the next software you'll need is Notepad++. So you're going to type in Notepad++ into Google. And then you're going to click on the website, go to click Downloads. And then you're going to click uh, the latest version. Shouldn't matter. You'll download it, run the installer. And you'll click OK, English, next, 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 next. So um, I already have it installed, so it won't let me do it, but that's just kind of the basic path. But they're all both pretty simple softwares to install. The next part is we need to launch Autodoc tools, which you should already have installed. And you just type in AutoD or Auto into your Windows toolbar, and this window should uh, pop up, and you can click on it. it usually takes a second or two to load. So um, here we have all of the tools launched. Um, basic introduction to the um, graphical user interface that we have here is that here on the side uh, we have different representations for the protein or any molecule of interest. Then we have kind of this is our uh, toolbar for Autodoc tools itself and it allows us to specify an input ligand, it allows us to specify flexible residues, um, what grid we'll be using to choose a, a, um, a macromolecule, like the protein we'll be docking it to, and uh, so on. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is you're going to go to your Crest folder, and you should have downloaded whatever PDB file uh, that you um, needed to get it, uh, that your group leader gave you. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be prepping our receptor. So we're going to be going to use the ESSA output of our receptor. And um, in this case, it's 2XJA, chain GNM, Z score, .pdb. And the reason that there's underscores between all of the words and that spaces is that Microsoft has a special character for indicating spaces um, that you kind of have to account for. Other like operating systems like Linux don't always have that and it can cause issues in certain softwares. And that's why we always want to have underscores when we type in our file names instead of spaces because it's a good habit to get into um, because it does make a lot of softwares that are academic in nature um, run better. So we're just going to click on it and we're going to drag into Autodoc tools. And here we have our protein. And if we want to view it in a different way, we can click on the sticks and balls representation, which is this B column here. We just look on the circle that's next to uh, our protein name. And now we have the sticks representation. We can turn it off by re-clicking. And we can turn off the lines representation by re-clicking that. Then we can also show the ribbon uh, representation, which takes a second to compute, as well as the molecular surface. And it does have quite a nice um, molecular surface 
um, representation. And this is kind of what like a drug would see. It's just kind of the surface of the protein. It's kind of like the sum of all the van der Waals uh, radii. So now we're going to uh, show it as lines just for the sake of it, um, because we need to be able to see all the individual atom types. And uh, the first thing we need to do is add in polar hydrogens. And the reason we need to add in polar hydrogens is because these atoms effectively <clears throat> are the only ones that have strong enough intermolecular interactions to merit uh, detection by this algorithm. It's a simplistic one, it approximates, but that's what makes it so quick. So we don't need the nonpolar hydrogens. So to do that, we're just going to right click on the 2XJA um, protein and we're going to click add polar hydrogens. And now you should see a bunch of white ticks by all the amine groups because that's where the polar hydrogens are. Um, and next we're going to go to um, uh, edit and we're going to click charges. We're going to click compute gas diagram. And then you should see a number pop up. It'll vary depending on what structure you're using. Um, and you can just click OK. And the reason we did this is that uh, because the algorithm, the software we're using, needs to know the charges of each atom in order to evaluate how well the drug binds. So we need to compute the uh, charges for all of the atoms within the structure um, and record those, and that's what the compute gas dagger charge did. There's other, there's the Coleman charge, there's other ones you can use, but for the sake of simplicity and understanding, this is all you need to worry about for now. Then we're going to click docking, macro, oh, grid, macromolecule, choose, and we're going to click on our protein. We're going to click select molecule. Uh, it's going to pop a warning. It might say it has no non bonded atoms. You can just click OK. And now we have to save it as a PDBQT file. And the PDBQT file effectively uh, is like a PDB file in format, except that it also contains the charge and the type column. The charge column, like I said, records like the charge of each atom. So that allows it to determine if the drug will be attracted or repelled to a certain site. And uh, the type column, the T, just records what kind of like bonds it forms. Is it a hydrogen donor, hydrogen acceptor, etc. Um, so we're going to go to Quick Access, Documents, Crest, and we're going to save it as a QT file. I've done this before, so it already exists. So I'm just going to overwrite it. And then you should see it turn a different color indicating that it has been taken in by the program. So the next thing we need to do is we need to uh, put in our ligand, uh, which in this case will be my MER E drug one results. And if you're on my team this year, uh, you're going to get a spreadsheet that looks a bit like this. It looks complicated, but all it essentially is is the chemical formula of each drug, each row is a a potential drug and antibiotic. It's molecular weight, how pure it is when you do buy it, how much you get when you buy it. It's Smiles ID, which is a common chemical format for basically storing the chemical structure in a single line without the need of any kind of special characters. And then we have the big names, which we don't need at the moment. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to type, go to Google and you're going to type in smiles to PDB. Then you're going to click this first link that says Novo Pro Labs. You're going to copy. I'm going to copy the first line. And copy. And then paste. And click submit. It should default to the PDB format. It usually only takes about a second or two. So now here we have the 2D structure of our molecule. And you're going to click download the 3D molecule so we have the 3D coordinates. And then it should download a random PDB file name to your uh, downloads folder. So you're going to click F2 or rename, and you're just going to name it the MER E drug. I'm going to cut and paste it into my Crest folder. And uh, next thing we're going to do. Oh, I typed it different, that's why I didn't overwrite. In any case, it doesn't matter. 
Um, so you're going to take in your uh, ligand, the drug you're studying, and you're going to click and drag it over to Auto.Tools. And you should see in here that it is kind of like this green thing in the center. It may be in a different spot depending on what drug you're using, but the important thing is that you see it in this column here, the file that you created. And much like the protein, I'm just going to click this lines button to turn the protein off so we only see the, um, the ligand. We're going to uh, right click and click add polar hydrogens. This one already has the polar hydrogens, but since not all of them will have that, it's good to get into the habit. And you can see nothing really happens, it's already there. Then you're going to click ligand, input, choose because you're choosing the ligand you're going to use for simulation, and you're going to click on uh, your MER e drug on your whatever uh, drug you're studying. Then you're going to click Select Molecule for Auto Doc 4. And you'll see a little window pop up, and it'll say Added Gas Dagger Charges. That means it calculated the charges for each atom, so that way it knows um, how it'll interact with the protein. Um, it merged 12 nonpolar hydrogens. This essentially means that it's merging non-essential hydrogens into the structure, it's kind of getting rid of them, and because uh, it's not necessary, it doesn't have a very strong electrostatic interaction, um, that it found 10 aromatic carbons. And the reasons that that is important is that in drug protein interactions, um, due to some very complicated uh, orbital mechanics of benzene rings and other aromatic compounds, they have a tendency to sometimes stack on top of each other. Um, it's not really the point of this exercise, but it's worth noting. Um, so when someone says, benzene stacking, you'll know what they're talking about. Next, it's detected nine rotatable bonds. The reason it's done this is that the way the algorithm works is that it takes the drug of interest and it identifies all the single bonds that it can rotate about that like aren't, don't have a double bond or chill bond or aren't part of a ring. And from this, we can see uh, that it found nine and those are nine rotatable angles that it can move about like it would naturally. Um, and if you look at this structure here, it's kind of curved into a U-shape, but it could be straight. It could be a more of an S-shape if it twists the other way. There's a lot of conformations that these molecules can take on in real life, and it's important to account for those. We're going to click OK. So now we see it's prepared the molecule. And we have it in our, our protein. Um, so we're going to click ligand, then output, and then save as PDBQT, because we need to save a PDBQT file, a file that accounts for the charge types to use in our software. Then we're going to click documents, and we're going to click crest, and then we're going to click in mer e drug one PDBQT, and we're going to save it. And I'm replacing because it's already in my directory. Okay, so you should see a, a drug, your drug PDBQT and your protein PDBQT in your uh, directory. Now, the next thing you'll need to do is you'll need to turn back on your protein and you're going to click grid and then grid box. And now you'll see a little box overlaid on the protein. And we're going to basically use this to tell the program where you want it to search. And the bigger the box, the more the, pro the program has to search. And we're going to have a pretty big box since this is kind of a big protein. So we're going to need to uh, make our program search really hard. And that's a feature that we'll talk about later. So for this object, peanut, you're going to want to set the spacing to one. Um, and the way to picture this box is that it's essentially a sequence of, it's a three-dimensional grid of points. It's like 40 points in the X direction, which is this um, red box. Uh, the 40 points in the Y, 40 points in the Z. Each face corresponds to its axis by color. And within this box, there's um, 64,000 grid points. And that's 64,000 points that it will evaluate the potential of the drug and its associated conformations at that um, uh, area. Um, so there's a finite amount, but a large amount. And what we can do is we can increase the sizes to encompass the entire protein. You want it to be just big enough so that nothing's popping out, but not too big that the program has to do unnecessary work. Um, so it's looking good. 
It's looking like it's a little off center, so there's a bunch of blank space here. So we can make our X axis a little bit smaller and then shift it its center a little bit over to the right. And you can just kind of play with the dials to see what kind of effect they have. Now we're going to increase this number of points in the Z direction. And we can see that nothing's really sticking out there too much. And then we need to increase it in the Y direction. That was a little bit sticking out of blue, yeah. Okay, great. So now we have our entire protein in our little box. So what we're going to do is we're going to click File, and then we're going to click Output Grid Dimensions File. And this will essentially record all our values. So we can look back at them later because we'll need them. So we go to uh, our we start a little crest folder, and we're going to save this as our Murray E or whatever your name, your drug one, or whatever its name is, or whatever run this is for you, um, uh, underscore gpf.txt. Um, and the underscore gpf is for, it stands for grid parameter file, so it tells us what the parameters are for the, for the uh, box, the grid. So we're going to click yes, because I already have it in my directory, and then we're going to close out of it. Oh, we're going to click file, then close saving current. And if you want to double check that's still there, you can click on grid box and you'll see that's still involved in the protein. So we have our protein pre uh, prepared. We have our ligand prepared. We have our grid parameter file. And the next thing we're going to do is we need to make a configuration file to feed to the software so that way it knows what to analyze for us. So you should have downloaded something called um, a Vena configuration uh, file from uh, Teams. And we're just going to double click on it. If you don't have Notepad already installed, you're going to right click and then you're going to click Open With and you're going to click uh, More Apps and then you're going to scroll down and look for another app in this PC. And now it's going to open your program files directory, directory in your C drive. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for Notepad. And then we're going to click on Notepad.exe and we're going to click Open. So now we can view it in Notepad. And uh, this is our GPF file. The, actually, this is one thing. Um, here we go. Um, so you'll download this. It'll look something like this. And these are the different arguments, the different parameters we'll give to our uh, file. And I'll explain these as we go. So the first thing you need to do, and it's important to remember that all these files have to be in the same di directory to, for the program to work. So we're going to set the receptor, the protein, as mer e, and this will be whatever the name of your uh, PDBQT file is for your ligand. So mer e drug underscore one dot uh, PDBQT. And another way to do it is you can just uh, click rename, control A, control C to select all and copy. And then if it's a really long name, like these are here, you're just going to paste it. And that's the same effect. Then your ligand, um, it's going to be mer e drug. Oh, I'm sorry. It should, this should be 2NM. The receptor should be this. Or uh, receptor protein, not your drug. And then the ligand is your mer e drug one PDBQT. And this and doing this copy and paste method of the file names is preferable because it minimizes any kind of error. Um, and then your output file will just be your ligand underscore results dot PDBQT. Um, so yes, uh, this will basically just append your ligand name with output or with the results name and it'll save it as a PDBQT file. Then this will save all the confirmations of the drug um, in different locations and different poses that we can review later as our results. And you'll see this next six arguments, this is center X, center Y, center Z, size X, size Y, size Z. These are the arguments that'll tell the program where to search, where our grid box is. So you're going to open your mer e drug one uh, 
Yeah, you're going to open your Murray Drug One GPF file. And then it'll open the same window. You're going to want to have them in two. So you're going to right click on the tab and you're going to click Move to New Instance. Next, uh, you're going to basically put in these values, and these correspond to the X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z values of center X and size. So this, this uh, 3.059, why not speed button? And then coin zero four seven is our Z value. We're going to copy, make that paste. And the good news is, for each, if you're only docking to, if you're docking different ligands to the same protein, you only have to do these values once. The only thing you need to change is your ligand, your output, and your log file. Um, then you're going to have your number of points. This will be eighty six, fifty four. 62, and it's important to double check that these are correct because otherwise you won't get good results. So center X is 3.059, negative 1.970, 0 0.407, 86, 54, 62. Um, your exhaustiveness should be set to 100 because you have a large search base. Um, if it's smaller, it can be a bit less. The exhaustiveness basically tells the algorithm how much to search for, and it scales roughly linearly with time. So if you double the exhaustiveness, you'll double the length of time that you're program will run for. The default is 8. We're setting it to 100 just to be thorough, though I'm going to keep it at 8 just so when it runs it doesn't take a while while I'm recording the video. But remember, always set this to 100. Take the time. I'm going to set number of modes to 20 because that's the maximum number of modes it can return anyways. Um, and then CPU will be 6. We're assigning CP 6 CPU score, 6 CPU cores to the program. Um, and that should be enough to get done pretty quickly without freezing up your computer. So then we're going to rename our log file to meredrug1results.dlg. Um, and when doing this properly, um, you're going to want to use uh, your the ID of this drug, but, or you could call it, just to make your life easier, you can call it drug1 as the first row and then you'll record the ID later. In any case, um, we are finished putting in the parameters for our um, software. So we're going to click Control S to save. It should turn from red to blue and we should be um, good to go shortly. So we're going to go to the uh, our C drive and then we're going to go to Program Files 86 and then we're going to click on the Scripps Research Institute and double click on Vina. And you're going to copy, control, click Control C, the Vina.exe file. And if you don't see Vina.exe, you can click View. And then you can click the check mark on the file name extensions. And you're going to want to uh, do this um, check mark because seeing the file extensions will be useful. Um, and now you're going to go back to your Crest folder and you're going to paste it in and you should see this vina.exe file at the bottom. Now we're going to um, run the simulation. Um, you're going to want to rename your, uh, um, your configuration file to uh, what you're using for that drug so you can keep track of what you did. So I'm just going to name this mer e drug one config the configuration file.txt. And now we're going to go to our command prompt. We're going to type in Windows, the Windows button CMD, then press enter. And then we're going to click on our file explorer, this window here, on this little bar, and it should highlight your address. We're going to click Control C. Then we're going to go to our command prompt, and we're going to type in uh, CD, and then press Control V. And this essentially means that we're going to change the directory that the command prompt is pointing to towards this address. And we've got uh, what it's currently pointing to is our, my users folder uh, for me, which is smithdp. We're going to click enter and you should see that this side part here is updated for the path that you specified. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to type in vina.exe. And this is kind of what is known as a command line interface. It looks a little frightening, but it's really easy to use. Essentially, what we're doing here is we are going to uh, like 
call the executable and it'll print it out all the arguments that it needs, as well as um, an optional health document that you can call for. And the reason they're using a CLI, a command line interface, in this is that it's very easy to code and very easy to update and maintain. Um, graphically easier interfaces like these, they take a lot of time and money to make. They're complicated. I appreciate them. They are a luxury, um, especially in academic software. But in any case, I digress. Uh, to run the simulation, we're going to pass in this configuration argument. Um, and this will contain lots of similar arguments that we put in earlier, but all in one text file so that we don't have to rewrite them when we do multiple simulations. So we're going to do um, type in vena.exe, and then everything we type in after this point will be treated as an argument, uh, something that the program takes in. So we're going to type in vena.exe minus minus config, and then we're going to type in mer e. We're going to click tab until our config file shows up. And it'll just kind of cycle through the options to get the one you want. And then we're going to click enter. And then you should see that the program is setting up. It's setting up the scoring function. It's analyzing the binding site. And uh, we'll just await a little bit. It shouldn't take super long to do for the program to run. This would take much longer if I had the exhaustiveness set to 100. But I said it's 8 just for, to show you how to do it. But you should set it to 100. Um, for illustrative purposes. It'll finish in a few seconds. Interesting. Um, so now it, we have our output of the results. And you'll see It'll have this uh, MER eDrug1 results at DLG. And if you right click on it and click open with, and then you click on Notepad, and then you can click always open this app, to, use this app to open DLG files. And the DLG, if I didn't mention earlier, stands for docking log file. And you'll see the exact output, and this way you can reference it later. So the next thing uh, we're going to do is we're going to convert our results, the PDB QT file, so like PyMol can read, which is the uh, PDB file. So we're going to type Windows, and we're going to type in open Babel GUI, I'm going to click enter, and you'll see this GUI pop up. And there's the way this works is there's an input format and an output format option. Our input version will be PDB QT, and you can select it from this dropdown, which contains a lot, I think all of the chemical formats that exist. There's lots of them, they all store in different ways. And then you're going to click your output format as PDB. And what you're going to do uh, is you're going to click on these three dots. And you're going to uh, click on the uh, MER e drug run results uh, PDB QT. Um, I have two, you should only have one because it ran so far and mistyped the drug name. And you're going to click open. And then you're going to click on the other three dots on this side to specify where it's going to put them and what it's going to call them. And I'm just going to type in mer e drug one results .pdb, and we're going to click save and we're going to click yes to overwrite it because I already had it in there. Then you'll click convert and it will convert all of these into their proper uh, PDB format. Now we can close uh, open Babel. And we can go into our mer e drug one results .pdb, and we're going to double click. And then we're going to, this will open the results, and then we're going to open our 2xja um, ESSA output. And then we're going to click on uh, the show surface. And we can see, and then we're going to click on our MER e drug one, and we're going to click show as spheres, and then just for illustrative purposes, to make it easy to see, we're going to make it red. And then to show the ESSA results, we're going to click color on the uh, 2XJA spectrum and beta factors. And this will show kind of the heat map of what are known to be essential residues for this protein structure. So um, from here, uh, if you look into the uh, lower right-hand corner, you'll see selecting state than one of 20. 
and you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to kind of switch between them. You see it's going from three to four to five, and also this bar on the bottom also works. Um, or you can click this arrow right here. And essentially, this corresponds directly to the results in that DLG file. And here we can see uh, from this file, we see the mode, which corresponds to the state. This mode one here corresponds to mode one here, which is shown in this red in this little pocket here. And uh, it's binding affinity. And if you kind of think of it as kind of a ball rolling down a hill with potential energy, you want your binding affinity to have the lowest potential energy, which means the quote unquote highest or look largest negative um, affinity, a binding affinity value. So number one was the top uh, binding value is negative 6.5. I mean, it's worth noting that you want your drug to bind well, but the th a therapeutic binding site may not always be the highest ranked one. Um, so it could be number seven or number 11, uh, who knows? But it's important to keep in mind that just because it binds super well to one spot, doesn't mean that'll be the site of therapeutic interest. Now, um, moving on, uh, we want to be able to kind of record our results. So you're going to want to click on the Excel file that you were given. Uh, I have, you'll be given a, a template for your results. And I need to make this an outline. Okay. Now you're going to put your name of the drug, which in this case, we called it drug one because it's the first drug in the sequence, um, but you'll be having different assignments. So you're going to click control C and then you're going to copy and paste its ID. So it's, you can do kind of like an N minus one approach. So two minus one is one, it's drug one. Um, so you're going to copy and paste the ID into the name of the drug. And then you're going to type in your name minus Bergen Smith. And then when you go back to your DLG file, you should be able to double click and you'll see that it has this random seed result. And you're going to type in a negative 1721, or you can just copy and paste it. Um, that's easier. Then you're gonna record all the affinities, negative 6.5, negative 6.3, negative 6.0, and so on and so forth. Oh. Okay. So, um, and then you're going to do this for every drug that you're assigned to, and then you're going to send this to your quest leaders, and we'll compile the results so we can analyze them. But while we have our drugs in our PyMall session, uh, by the way, in your quest folder, you're going to want to do some little housekeeping before you do anything else. So. I'm just going to sort this by name, and you're going to type in docking results. You're going to make a docking results folder. You're going to double click on it, and you're going to type in your PDB QT, PDB results, your PDB QT results share with the original files, and then your DLG files, your, your log files that show the actual results. And then you're going to create one that contains your um, config, config files. So it'll be useful if you have a new file explorer window. So you can open them side by side. And you're going to drag in your mer e. Uh, this is just for your results. So you're going to drag in your uh, res results.dlg into your dlg file folder your drug one results PDBQT file into a PDBQT folder, your um, configuration file into your config files folder, and your MER e drug one into your PDB results folder. Uh, and that way you can kind of keep track of which is which and that'll make your life much easier down the line. And then you're gonna create a new folder called PyMall sessions because you also wanna keep those. So, we're going to close out of our file explorer and we're going to do a little bit of rudimentary analysis. So um, earlier on you learned about showing specific residues and stuff, but um, since you already know how to do that, I'm just going to show you how to do uh, 
uh, make the program look at uh, multiple states at once, multiple binding poses. So what you're going to do is you're going to click split. You're going to go to this console up here and you're going to type in split states, comma. Then you're going to type in mer dash e and then underscore drug underscore one underscore results dot pdb. Uh, oh no, sorry. Or e. Sorry, there's no comma. It's split states, then mer dash e, and you can click tab, you know, autofill the rest, mer e drug one results. Then you're going to type in prefix equals conf underscore. And then this conf underscore means confirmation kind of space, and then it'll put a number after each. And then it'll zoom in for whatever reason. You can kind of just zoom back out. And if it shows a splice, like kind of like a slicing uh, thing you can see inside the protein, just kind of scroll up on your uh, trackpad with uh, scroll down your trackpad with two fingers. And here we can see where the drug is binding on the protein. And we can, uh, you can toggle which ones you see. Like if you only want to see the top five results, like I said, they're ranked from one to the lowest binding affinity, which is the best to worst. So if you want to only view the top five, you can click and drag and show off the, um, the top five. And this is kind of just the basic intro. Um, and what you can do later is you can like see what are some interesting poses like these in here look like I might be buying to the active site or this one might be a potential Alistair pocket. So um, I'm going to hide the surface. Hide the surface. And you can kind of get a, a more close look at the cartoon representation. And just kind of play around with it. Um, use a reference model that you um, to determine where some uh, significant residues that might be uh, impacted by it, or if there's any special functional domains that it's binding to. And you can kind of get a better idea of how these drugs might impact the protein's function. In any case, um, now that you have this all set up, you're going to click file. You're going to click um, save session as, and you're going to go to your crest folder. And you're going to click documents crest. Then you're going to go to your document results folder in your um, panel sessions, and you're going to type in the name of your protein, then drug one. And for just simplicity, you're going to make it the, like, whatever row it was. So it's in row two, but it starts at two, so it's row one. And then that means, like, row five would be a row eight, or actually row seven, and so on and so forth. You subtract one, and then uh, where you drug one, Pymol, and then you're just going to click save. And now you can exit out of this, and anytime you want to come back, um, you're going to click file, Pymol sessions, and you're just going to double click. And you should see it's not open. Isn't that great? You've done your first drug analysis, and you're going to kind of um, copy and paste uh, this part. to like multiple columns and then you're going to want to make sure to delete all these entries before you get started again so that way you don't accidentally keep any like uh, redundant information or incorrect information from a previous entry um, and as usual if you have any questions feel free to contact me or any other quest leader and i'll be happy to help you out um, i wish you luck in your research you will go through all of your um, assigned uh, drugs and you will report your findings and we'll analyze them together as a group in our small uh, breakout rooms. And with that, I wish you luck. Goodbye.